Hey guys, Brent Abernathy here. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time today talking about uh, the importance of having a good schedule in our business. It's something, one thing that attracts people to our business is the ability to, to have a flexible schedule and not only get the work done as an independent contractor, get the work done that you need to do uh, to provide an income for your family, but also the ability to spend the time that you want to do uh, other things, you know, outside of work with your family or, or, or doing other things in general. So one thing that I've realized, and that's very attractive attractive to our business. But I want to be clear with you on this, that even though you can have a flexible schedule, you have to have a schedule and you have to stick to it. In our business as an independent contractor, and I'm speaking from firsthand experience on this, when I first started in this business 11 years ago, um, I would find myself during work hours of the day, uh, I was working from home, out of my home office at the house, but I would find myself getting distracted and going and running errands for an hour or two a day or doing the laundry, doing dishes, whatever the case might be. And you look up and boom, all of a sudden you're missing an hour of the day and you're not getting the productive work done in the time that you need. And you're not being efficient with your time. So with all this, and I'm going to go through the, you know, what we've learned uh, is a schedule that works for all of our agents uh, or most of our full time agents. But I, I just want you to understand, you can have a flexible schedule, but the this is the biggest thing that trips new agents up in our business is is they take advantage of the fact that they are an independent contractor and they have this thought process of oh i work for myself i can work when i want to work uh, i can do whatever i want to do but but you're going to get eaten alive in this business if you don't have a schedule and you stick to that schedule whatever that might be maybe you're part-time um, and and you're just working a couple days a week whatever that it stick to that schedule. Maybe you're full time, stick to that schedule. Maybe you have to change your schedule on a week to week basis. And it doesn't matter. The point is you have to have one and you have to stick to it. What should that schedule consist of if, you, if you're a full time agent? Whatever it takes to run 30 appointments a week. If you run 30 appointments a week, I don't care what your background is. I don't care how good you are inside the home, on, on the phone, any of that stuff. If you run 30 appointments a week as a full-time agent, I promise you, you're gonna, you're gonna sell somewhere close to $400,000 worth of insurance, okay? It, 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 you cannot beat the numbers and they can't beat you, okay? But it boils down to schedule and it has to be consistent. 30 appointments a week. It has to be almost like Groundhog Day. I remember when I first started in this business, it was like my kids, and they were young at the time, they knew if it was a Tuesday, they knew, oh, daddy's going to Alabama to run appointments. If it was a Wednesday, they knew, oh, daddy's running appointments here in Florida. Uh, if it was a Monday, they knew daddy wasn't going to be home from the office until I finished booking my appointments for the two, the next two days. So uh, again, everybody, I'm not numb to the fact that everybody, each individual has different challenges, different responsibilities, different things that work into their schedule. Okay. So I, I would urge you and encourage you talk to somebody about your specific schedule because schedule is one of those things that can be the hardest thing to put together when you're a brand new agent. But what you learn uh, how to put together an effective schedule is very simple and very easy. So talk to somebody who has done it a bunch and can help you with your specific schedule. The other thing before I get into actually the nuts and bolts of what your schedule should look like is if you're if you have a family, if you're married, have a significant other, have kids, whatever, I would encourage you each week to sit down with your family and communicate what your schedule is and what your schedule needs to be and why you're working the hours that you're working, why you're out late at night, sitting in front of people, helping them with insurance. So that way everybody's on the same page. Um, again, go back to when I first started, my wife knew that on Mondays and Thursdays, which were my dial days, she knew that short of something happening to my kids and them being in the emergency room or whatever, she knew that nothing was going to get in my way. Like I was not 
leaving the office, I was dialing. It was my dial day. This is important. This is what sets up my entire week, right? And, and she knew and my kids knew that I was doing it for them. And, and, and when I was on the road, traveling, whatever, uh, running business, that I was doing that for them so, so I could ultimately spend more time and do the things that, that, that we wanted to do as a family. So communicate that, whether or not you have, you know, your own calendar or whatever up that, that your kids or your family is a part of and they put their own stuff in there. So, um, but, but I think that that's another thing that trips people up is, is, is not communicating that on the front side of things. So what does an effective schedule look like? Um, again, I'll go back to whatever it has to look like for you to run 30 appointments. If you're a full-time agent, whatever it has to look like to run 30 appointments, because you will have success if you run 30 appointments. If you don't run 30 appointments every single week, you're, it's almost like you're flipping a coin and heads is success and tails is 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 not success and you don't know what it's going to come up on every single week but 30 appointments means it's going to come up on that success every single week okay um now when i build a schedule as a full-time agent there's there's important things there's non-negotiable things that you have to have in your schedule okay uh, obviously it's dialing the phone booking appointments is one um, you have to have your run schedule your run times your time in the field of out in front of clients uh, making sales or door knocking or, or, or whatever but out in the field time you also have to schedule in time for training and education right uh, you have to schedule in time for if you're building a business um, you have to schedule in time for interviews you know hiring talking to new recruiting uh, talking about building the business side of things so you know it's, it's something where you have those big those big things that you know have to go in now it's a matter of where do we fit them in right what we've learned is most of our full-time agents um, they dial the phone on Mondays and Thursdays. They're, they're in the office or they're in their home office or, or wherever you dial. It's Monday and Thursday is nothing but dialing. That's your only focus. Why? Because if you do dial day right and you knock it out, the rest of your week is set up for success and, and the rest of the week becomes easy. But if you somewhat dial on dial day and you, you, you just kind of, you know, you get distracted, you don't dial the full amount of time, you know, whatever, and you shortchange yourself on dial day, well then guess what? You're gonna be chasing your tail the rest of the week and feeling like you have to play catch up the rest of the week. So um, dial day is dial day. Um, you know, what I typically do is in the morning, First thing, I, I'm always, you know, like on a dial day, when I wake up, my leads, I know where I'm running. I know where I'm dialing. Why? Because I prepared. I did that the day before. So now I'm not shuffling through leads and wasting an hour on the morning of dial day. I'm getting right to it. Okay. Um, 7.30, 8 o'clock at the latest, boom, we're on the phone. We're dialing on, on a Monday and a Thursday. Um, dial until you get your 15 appointments for the next two days. So on Monday, you're dialing for appointments on Tuesday, Wednesday. On Thursday, you're dialing for appointments on Friday, Saturday. Again, how long is that going to take? That could take, you might be done dialing by one o'clock on a Monday. Okay. You also might still be dialing at 7 30 or 8 o'clock at night i don't know okay and as you're as a brand new agent it might take you longer to book those 15 appointments so maybe you're dialing you know later into the evening than a more experienced agent it's okay the point is is whatever it takes on a dial day however many dials it takes however long it takes set yourself up for success and focus on booking 15 appointments minimum for the next two days so tuesday and wednesday are nothing but field days okay so you you're out you're you're running your appointments you're helping people with insurance um it, you leave early in the morning and you come back late at night and again that's that's something that needs to be communicated to to your family members the, the, your loved ones whatever um that, that that these days i'm going to i'm going to be out in the field so 
It's also important, and I, I, I want to stress this, because if you're working close to your home on a run day, if you have a no-show or a reschedule, or maybe you have a little open block of time, it's real easy to to say to yourself, oh, I'm just going to go home. I'm going to go see the family. or I'm going to go home and chill out or, you know, I'm going to go run an errand or whatever. Like you have to think of field days is nothing but work days, period, in the story. And so if you're in the field and you have a no-show or a reschedule, make sure that, that that's time that you use to door knock, right? Time that you use to create activity, okay? Create activity, get in front of people, you know, knock on as many doors as you can. It's a field day, nothing else but in the field, okay, on Tuesday and Wednesday. And then you rinse, wash, repeat, on Thursday, just like Monday, it's a dial day. Then Friday, Saturday is all day in the field. Sunday for me was nothing but, you know, that was my family day. Okay, so Monday evenings, Thursday evenings, and Sunday was nothing but that's my family day. I'm doing whatever it is that, that my wife, my kids want to do, you know, that type of deal. So, and I, again, I'm not numb to the fact that each individual has different responsibilities, um, has you know, different ways they want to structure their schedule. I'm just telling you, we know that that schedule works for a new agent. Now, what'll happen is over time, your skill set will get better. And so maybe your skill set on the telephone, your skill set inside the home. So now over time, maybe you can get your 30 appointments in, in the field and your production in that you need for you and your family. Maybe you can get it in in three run days instead of four. Okay. But the, and you can adjust your schedule accordingly. So now maybe you, you run Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or now maybe you just run Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Okay. The point is, is, is trust me on this as a new agent, you need to be creating activity all the time to get your skill set good. And, and, and at some point when that skill set gets good, you know, you can kind of mix and match and change your schedule a little bit and condense your schedule a little bit more. But know full well as a new agent that that, that your schedule run days is going to it needs to be as a full-time agent, you need to have four full run days in the field with appointments book, door knock, and things like that. So the other thing I, I, I would say is, is make sure um, the education part, the training part. This is something that I think, actually, I don't think I know. I've seen it. I've been in this business 11 years that new agents fail to do the education and the training part. Uh, they fail to be efficient with their time and use their time wisely. So there's non-negotiable things in our schedule that need to be in there for training purposes. You have whatever team you might be a part of, I, they have a team call. If you're if you're part of my group, we have, we have a, a Gulf Coast team training call at 12, 12 noon central time uh, on Mondays. You need to be on that call. That time schedule, I know Monday's a dial day, but it's a good little time for you to take a quick 20, 30 minute break from dialing, get your education, boom, right back on the phone. Um, you know, we've got the next level live call from the corporate office uh, is on Friday mornings. You've got podcasts that are that are sent out uh, every day from the corporate office. There's all kinds of content, training videos, you know, on the corporate website, on YouTube, you name it. It's all over the place. FFLGulfCoast.com. Uh, we've got all kinds of, of training stuff. So you have to work that stuff into your schedule. When are good times to do that? Okay. Um, cause a lot of the stuff you can listen to recorded, you don't have to be on it live. Um, like you do, like say on Monday at 12 noon, that's, that's a live call. You need to be on that. Um, but but a lot of stuff's recorded so you can listen to it when it's convenient for you and when it works in your schedule. So when when should you put that stuff in? Well, number one, when you're riding around in a car, because you're going to have a lot of windshield time uh, out. In the, if you're doing this business right, you're going to have, let me say that, if you're doing this business right, you're going to have a lot of windshield time where you're out in the field, you're, um, you're driving 30 minutes in between appointments, things like that. So 
fill your head, uh, like immerse yourself into this business. Um, you should be listening to training, you know, podcasts, recorded uh, videos, in home, all that sort of stuff while you're riding around. Um, you know, listen to people who have had success in this business um, because they're not doing anything special. They've just kind of figured this business out. They, they're nothing special. They're not. They're no different than than you. It's just they have a little bit more experience in this business. So use that time, that windshield time, listening to them, listen to the podcast uh, early in the morning when you first wake up, or if you're somebody who likes to exercise, you're, you're going out on a run or whatever, put some earbuds in and, and, and instead of listening to music, listen to things that are going to help you in this business and, and help you make money late at night. Um, you know, instead of you know, sitting there and killing two or three hours watching TV. I mean, spend time uh, educating yourself and, and listening to training videos or podcasts or, you know, reading up on the, the, the different products and that you can have in your portfolio, whatever the case might be. The point is just make sure that you um, that you you do it when it's not money making time, when it when it's windshield time or, you know, don't don't catch yourself on a dial day. Don't allow yourself on a dial day uh, to, to, oh, I'm training, I'm, I'm learning the business, I'm, I'm watching videos when it's 10 o'clock in the morning when you, can, you need to be on the phone dialing. Just use those early morning, late night or windshield time uh, for your training. So the last thing I would say uh, on this, guys, is, is just be very diligent, be very cognizant of your, of your schedule, okay? Uh, when I first started, this was something I wasn't good at. I tricked my mind into thinking I was working. Okay. I was telling myself, oh, I'm sitting here, you know, looking at the computer, reading all this product stuff, whatever. And, and, and I tricked my mind and I constantly felt like I was in a rat race. I constantly felt like I was playing catch up. And the reality of it was I had to look myself in the mirror and I had to say, I'm not being efficient with my work time. When it's time to work, I'm not working a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent focused and active on the things I need to be active on. And, and, and it made things difficult, okay? But this business is an unbelievable business that yes, you can create your own schedule. You can do other things that you wanna do uh, and, and still make a significant income for your family, but it's not going to happen if you aren't very structured and very disciplined and very efficient with your schedule during the time that it is time to work. So I hope this helps guys. Um, it's schedule is very easy, it's very important. Um, and, and as I said earlier, if, if you're not sure what your specific schedule should be uh, for, for your situation, get with somebody who has more experience in helping set up a schedule, they'll help you. And then you just, you just have to be the one to run responsible to to follow through and uh and make it happen so hope this helps